Koopman's observation amounts to this, that the stirring, the permutation of the sack of marbles can be described by a matrix with a hundred rows and a hundred columns and the property that in each row and in each column there is exactly one one, all the rest being zeros. If such a matrix is M, then the averaging property of the shaking of the sack of marbles is described by forming the average m plus m squared plus and so on up to m to the n over n. And the assertion about the marble spending a third of its life in the bottom third becomes a theorem about the limit of the sequence of averages. And in the same way, the coffee example can be studied in terms of a unitary operator u, the appropriate generalization of a matrix, on an infinite dimensional instead of a hundred dimensional Hilbert space, and the uniform brownness of the cup of coffee is a property of the average u plus u squared plus u to the n over n, and the limit of that as n becomes infinite. The precise formulation and proof of this result, which is known as the mean ergodic theorem, is von Neumann's accomplishment in this direction. Shortly thereafter, inspired by it, G.G. Burkhoff presented a different version, and the subject has been extensively studied and investigated since then, here and abroad, in the Soviet Union and elsewhere. Von Neumann used operator theory to study spectral theory, to study ergodic theory, and he used ergodic theory as the motivation for and as a construction of basic examples in operator theory. He used operator theory also in his physical studies of quantum mechanics. When he was thinking about quantum mechanics, he could think as a physicist and be sloppy with the best of them. When he was thinking of operator theory, and in particular his special invention, rings of operators, he could be as precise and careful and algebraic as the best. Rings of operators, by the way, have come to be known as von Neumann algebras. One of the most startling and original contributions von Neumann made comes from the theory of rings of operators. If we study a finite dimensional, say a hundred dimensional Euclidean space, then to say that the subspace of it is 50 dimensional is just as well described by saying that it has half the dimension of the whole space. And to say that it is 75 dimensional is the same as to say that it occupies three quarters of the dimension of the space. So the dimensions may be described by percentages, say, running between 0, 100s and 100, 100s. In connection with various rings of operators, Fulman introduced dimension functions in continuous geometries where the dimensions could take any value between 0 and 1, so it makes sense to speak of a subspace of dimension 1 over pi. People often want to know what made Fulman so great. What made it possible for him to make so many contributions in so many different parts of mathematics? I don't know. It's easy enough to say that he worked hard. He worked very hard. There is a sort of a thread running through von Neumann's work. It's hard to say what it is. But essentially, it was his genius at synthesizing and analyzing things. He could take large units, rooms of operators, measures, continuous geometries, direct integrals, and express the unit in terms of infinitesimal little bits, and vice versa. He could take infinitesimal little bits and put together, glue together, by means of them, large units with arbitrarily prescribed properties. That's what a lot of modern mathematics is about. That's what Johnny could do, and what no one else could do as well. <laughs>